is the executive vice president of the Taxpayers Union, and he joins us now. Uh, Brandon, welcome, and, and thanks so much for picking up the call today. Uh, if you could just weigh in on the impact of the U.S. shutting down for a federal holiday, does it have any impact on the worldwide markets? Yeah, I mean, of course it has an impact shutting down our financial system, shutting down our, our markets. That does have an impact. There's a cost as well to taxpayers. Just closing the federal government for a day costs about $900 million to taxpayers. We're not sending all of those federal employees to work. And by result, a lot of adjacent to federal government employees also have today off. So this does have a big impact on our economy. You know, it's, it's a value judgment whether this ought to be a federal holiday or not. It's very, very recent that this has actually been the case only since 2021. So this is a brand new phenomenon. And certainly it does have an impact on the economy. Let me bring it back to stateside here. There's been some news when we're talking about businesses making money, losing money, et cetera. AT&T made a, a big choice, and we're about to tell you what it is, but it happened in San Francisco. Last week, NBC, the local news here, as you see, the New York Post, uh, AT&T is shutting their flagship store down in San Francisco. Uh, again, there are several different other businesses that have done the same uh, in San Francisco. But a local uh, affiliate in San Francisco reported that crime is a, there's a perception of crime um, versus the reality of crime. Listen to this. Once a crown jewel for retail shopping, tonight the Westfield San Francisco Center is pulling the plug on its famed downtown mall. The stunning decision to walk away comes as the city struggles with homelessness, an open-air drug market, and the perception of crime. And the perception of crime. Again, that was NBC Nightly News. I apologize. So that was the actual network. But again, um, when you write these stories, and I've mentioned this before, this gets fact-checked, this gets approved by a producer, an executive producer, um, obviously signing off saying the perception of crime. Again, and I said this last week, you can change perception. You cannot change fact. Obviously, AT&T isn't seeing perception. They're seeing fact because that's a major flagship store being pulled out of that city. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's, it's more than perception. There's no doubt about it. You look at the facts of the matter. Property crime in San Francisco is extraordinarily high. It's one of the highest rates in the entire country, more than 40 percent higher than the average city. Now, violent crime is a little bit lower. So what they do is they look at these crime statistics in aggregate. They say, well, murder rate is low in San Francisco. Therefore, the total crime rate is low. Yes, but businesses are being terrorized by mobs of people stealing things off their shelf. They have huge problems with their criminal justice system. They've destroyed the middle class in the state and certainly in the city with high taxes, high regulation that has basically encouraged the middle class to depart. So all you have now are people who are living in poverty and people who are extremely wealthy. It's a really bizarre economic circumstance and it's not sustainable economically speaking or in terms of quality of life. Sure, if you don't feel safe enough to go uh, and upgrade your phone at AT&T downtown, yeah. you're going to go somewhere else. You're either going to leave the city or you're going to find business that you can do online so you don't have to go in person. E you think about how yeah. that imp uh, impacts the job market and people's jobs uh, every day. Brandon Arnold, thanks for weighing in. We appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thanks. All right, we've got to bring this story to you that we've been following.